Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Alejandro Jimenez Wash Process Mexico from La Cabra Coffee Roasters. And there's the box right there. And I'll go ahead and show the back because I like the little goat that they have on the back. All right, La Cabra, based out of Orhus, Denmark, and they're a coffee roaster that's featured pretty regularly on this channel, having previously reviewed several boxes of their coffee. And in addition to that, they were featured in our Cafe Box Advent Calendar Blind Taste Test Rankings video series towards the end of last year, so they have featured quite regularly on this channel. And that's not too surprising given that they are one of the most popular coffee roasters in the entire world, as you can find them pretty much coast to coast throughout the United States, as there are so many coffee shops I've been to around the United States that does carry their coffee, and quite a few coffee shops in the area that carries their coffee pretty regularly. So when I saw this Mexico, it was something that definitely caught my interest as I very much enjoy reviewing Mexican coffees. And it's nice that La Cabra does carry Mexican coffees quite regularly. So it was a nice little fit for me to review this coffee. But one more thing I wanted to address about La Cabra real quick is the fact that I really enjoy that their coffees aren't the most detailed or descriptive things in general. As for example, this right here basically just says sweet, soft, and aromatic. And on the top, it says uh, floral and balanced. So not the most detailed or descriptive, coffee in general, and that's awesome because it gives me the opportunity to come up with my own thoughts and impressions of this coffee without being primed or influenced by their own notes. So I'm looking forward to discussing that in this coffee as this right here is day 25 of this coffee. And La Cabra does have a brew guide on their website, which is a 14.5 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I like my standard recipe a little bit more, so 16, point, 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio brew at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Best day I experienced from this coffee was through the V60. I think I'm liking it through the Chemex as well, so V60 would indicate a more medium fine grind. Chemex, of course, a more medium grind. And roast profile for La Cabra, it's something we've touched on in previous La Cabra reviews, as once upon a time they were a pretty light Nordic for their roast profile. However, I believe they've gone to Omni Roast with all of their coffee, so it's a little bit more developed than it used to be. So with all of those things out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 12, first impression, and I know a little early, they say wait two weeks, but just kind of wanted to gauge this coffee in general, and it was a little bit more citric than expected. Had some slightly sharp florals, somewhat skewing in a dark bitterness area, so it was an interesting and okay first impression, but I said, hey, I mean, this is kind of a throwaway day, this is just to kind of give me an overall impression of what I should be expecting from this coffee. Day 14 went back and the coffee was coming out bitter yet again in a, duff, in a couple of different aspects as it had a dark honey bitterness to it as well as a zest, zesty citric bitterness to this cup of coffee. Mostly feeling a lemon zest and a floral bitterness in general and it leaves a fair bit of that bitterness in the finish. So it wasn't necessarily the best first impression off a couple of first initial tries. Day 16 went back and adjusted to La Cabra's recipe and I never thought that La Cabra's recipe was going to be ideal for this coffee specifically as they have one of the most concentrated recipes I've ever seen from any coffee roaster. So as a result, uh, it was a lot more of that floral bitterness and it was sharpened than previous days, relative to previous days, and even more a bit of this kind of robust chocolate that was coming from this cup of coffee. So wasn't enjoying it too much to this point, but we'll continue. Day 18, back to the standard recipe through the Chemex, and it was really heightening the strong bitterness that was coming from this cup of coffee. Quite reminiscent of vanilla extract down to the strong bitterness. So that's one thing I really wanted to highlight was, I think the best descriptor I had for kind of that bitterness that I was getting from this cup of coffee was vanilla extract, which can be a little bitter if you've ever just kind of had vanilla extract on its own. And so there's plenty of dark chocolate and bitter honeysuckle to this cup of coffee yet again. So a lot of different bitter components to this cup of coffee. We'll continue as day 20 was by far the best day of the cup of coffee to this point. Brewed to the V60 with our standard recipe and a lot of the bitterness had slightly tapered off. So I said to myself, hey, maybe it was just the rest that was kind of uh, contributing to the bitterness that was coming from it. Give it a little bit more rest and the bitterness will taper off. As the honeysuckle aspect was much more on the forefront today, a little less of the chocolate bitterness and uh, still a nice bit of some sweeter vanilla to the cup of coffee at this point. So by far the best day I'd experienced and that was, well, what happened throughout. It was still the best day of this cup of coffee. As day 22, it was kind of an odd day as I did the exact same thing and this time it was coming out slightly roasty as there was a slight roasty bitterness that was coming from this cup of coffee and it was definitely not as good as the previous day as uh, there was a slight bit of citric, yet again, citric components in this cup of coffee and uh, it was a little bit more subtle relative to what was a weird kind of robust coffee bitterness that I was getting from it. So 
That one's kind of inexplicable, but we'll continue on as day 24. Another seemingly odd day as this time, the coffee came out wildly citric. So it finished off into a very strong lemon forward cup of coffee and it was quite bitter. It had some slight honeysuckle and floral cookie sweetness to the cup of coffee, which was the best part of the coffee on this day. I mean, it was the best part of the coffee throughout the time drinking it, but the strong lasting citric finish was a little bit overbearing in that sense. So it wasn't great on this day. It's not as present today here on day 25 to the Chemex. So that's why I wonder if maybe the Chemex would have been a little bit more consistent for the coffee in general, but uh, yeah, it just seemed pretty inconsistent throughout the time drinking it. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we were getting. And I'm gonna argue with myself on this tasting wheel, so let's run through it real quick as we have four level fours, the finish and the acidity. When I was making this tasting wheel, I initially charted both of those at a level three, but as the coffee cooled down, both the finish as well as the acidity really opened up, so that's why I bumped those both up to a level four. Today, it'd be a level three. I think most of the time drinking this coffee, it would be a level three. I don't know what happened the time I was making that tasting wheel, which was the previous day, because that citric component was really strong on that day too, and that one also charts there at a level four. But again, today I would bump that down to a level three. As well as the bitterness, I would bump that down to a level three. So this tasting wheel is a little inconsistent in the sense that it would change a lot based off of the day and brew method that you are brewing this coffee. Cleanliness level three, I would probably bump that up to a level four today as it's a little bit cleaner today than it was when I made the tasting wheel yesterday. Sweetness level three, I think that's kind of consistent throughout. The sweetness and the florals, I feel like they never charted higher than level three. Even on the sweetest day, which was at day 20 mark, I could only put that at the higher side of level three for sweetness. And the florals, maybe if I'm being super generous, lower side of the level four when I was experiencing somewhat of a strong honeysuckle. Um, chocolate, so I like to lump the chocolate and the vanilla in in the same category on this tasting wheel. That could have been at the highest at level four, which was going to be again on the best day of this cup of coffee, which was at day 20. But even then that was probably going to be a little generous level three. And then um, bitterness, smokiness, they're kind of on the higher side of things. I think that smokiness is a little high at that level three, if I'm being completely honest. Yesterday was just kind of a little bit of a outlier wild day. So that would probably be bumped down to a level two. Body, it actually is on the lighter side, I think. Maybe that's why they really like the concentration to be as high as it is. Yeah, I know I was going to argue with myself on this tasting wheel because I don't necessarily agree with it most of the time. I think it's a good representation of what I was experiencing yesterday, which was a little bit of an odd cup of coffee. I think it would be drastically different today, and I think it would be drastically different on most other days because, as I mentioned, this was a little bit of an inconsistent cup of coffee in that sense. Maybe a very sensitive cup of coffee to the brew. All right, my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. So, I mean, um, Mexican coffees aren't the most wild out there cups of coffee to begin with, so I didn't necessarily expect it to be. But what I've noticed is this has been, for the most part, in line and pretty consistent with what I've experienced from most of La Copper's coffees in general. As in most of our reviews, the coffee seems to kind of maintain itself on the lower side of things. Like, it doesn't usually reach too many things above a level three. Like it's pretty well rounded in that sense. Most of them will kind of peak at the level four mark. I mean, I don't think I've ever charted anything at a level five or any of La Cabra's coffees. So they're kind of in a sense, very balanced, which is exactly what they say and describe on this box of coffee as well. So I could see that in that sense. It was an odd drink in the sense that um, so much inconsistency throughout the time. I was getting so many different things from this cup of coffee and it just basically depended on the day in which I could say this was the most dominant factor and uh, component to this cup of coffee. So not necessarily my favorite. I think I enjoyed their previous Mexican coffee better. I've definitely enjoyed other La Cabra coffees more than I've enjoyed this one. So yeah, I think that's just kind of my overall impressions of this one. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to, um, if you really like the florality of coffee, I'm, try I'm really trying to think hard on how I would suggest this one because if you can get that florality, it's quite nice. Like a honeysuckle and vanilla florality to this cup of coffee, it's quite pleasant. As mentioned, that day 18 was a nice cup of coffee. But keep in mind that for whatever reason, there seems to be a lot of citric that comes from this cup of coffee from time to time. And it can be a little inconsistent. So if you really like kind of testing it out, a lot of variety to your cup of coffee and you don't mind the bitterness, then I think this one's a pretty good fit for you. But for the most part, I think that's kind of the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee or anything else from La Cabra, would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it or them as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Alejandro Jimenez Wash Process Mexico from La Cabra Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.